Hello, welcome to the Bee's Knees. Today we're working on Wizard Love. It's a wood cutout and it's a to-go kit that comes with everything that you'll need. You can order in the description below. Okay, let's get started on this Wizard Love. It's divided into four sections and that's how we're going to paint it. We have a great pattern that you're going to put right over the letters. And you can see through this tissue paper, so you can tell if it's exactly lined up. Now here's our trick. We're going to take a marker, just a plain old marker. It's the marker that comes in your kit will work perfectly. And I'm just going to trace the lines that are on the paper. This is just a placement. If you don't get it exactly traced, it's okay. Just placement. So the first letter, L, is looks like Harry, and you can see his scarf. The second one is nine and three quarters, and we're going to put in the lines for some bricks. See, it only takes a couple minutes, but it'll give you good placement. Simple as that. I don't need to do anything else. The only thing I need are the mortar lines. The V is a little more difficult just because we're going to do a straight line right down for an outline. Off the wood a little bit there, it's okay. And the E, we're doing something special. You don't need to put anything on there. Just helps you line everything up. And when you take your tissue off, you can see that we have an outline just something real simple, just to give you placement again. All right, let's get right to it. The first thing we're gonna do is start with this brown color. Comes Everything comes right in your kit. There's no mixing for this one. And we're just going to paint the hair. Now with the wood painting, sometimes you need to put two coats. You get quite a selection of brushes in your kit so just use the one that is the most comfortable for you. Maybe you want a larger brush. I like this one. It's as simple as that. We're just coloring in, painting in the areas. Clean my brush. And you'll get bowls for your water and your paper towels even in your kit. We think of everything. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is the skin. We're just gonna work our way down. And for the skin, we are gonna blend some colors. So we're gonna take white. And every time I, I talk about the colors that we're using, um, like two parts of white, that would be two brushfuls of white. I'm using a pretty good size brush. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow that's just a little tip of my brush of yellow. Start mixing it, see how I like it. And then I might add a little bit of red if I want to. Just depends what color you would like. The, the red would add just a little touch of pinkness to it. Well, that looks good. I'm just gonna blend those together and away we go. Now you can see I'm painting right over those black lines here because you can see through them still. I can still see the lightning bolt and I can still see his glasses. So I'm just gonna paint right over them. Makes it nice and easy. Okay, clean my brush off. As it dries, you can tell if you need a second coat or not. And 
And then we're going to do the scarf. And we're using this brownish red color. There are two reds in your kit. It's called Venetian Red. And we're just doing every other. You notice how we started at the top of our project. So we aren't putting our arms in wet paint. Helps, right? Be careful not to get into the lower V design when you come to this area. See how fast this is going? It's, it's fun because it's not, it's relaxing. And again, watch your, let your letters on the right side here. We're going to take this right to and just kind of look where your letter lines up. Let's tap the scarf. Cleaning off my brush and I'm going to go with the dark yellow color. Yellow oxide is the color that we're using for this. Again, watch your letters that are below. See, I grabbed a little bit of red because the paint's still wet. Okay, just, just pull it off, wipe it off your brush and go again. That's the beauty of acrylics. It's not like glazes. The acrylics, you can cover it right up and just keep going. Okay, I'm going to take a look back at my other colors that I've painted on and I see my brush strokes as it's drying and you can see a little bit of wood through it. It just means you need a second coat, so that's what I'm gonna do. Go back into that brown and do a second coat right over it. Fill it in. Okay, see how it filled everything in? The skin, I would like it to be a little bit um, smoother too, so I'm gonna take my color and do a second coat on that. So even though I'm doing a second coat, you can still see your design that you've trace down there, you can still see it. Okay, so uh, we need this to dry a little bit before we can put the decorations on. We're gonna leave that for now and move right on to our, oh, the uh, first thing I'm gonna do is mix some colors for gray. And again, I'm gonna do one scoop, one part, of white and then just a tiny bit of black. If, if you use just a little bit, you'll get gray. If you use too much, it's going to be way too dark. So be careful. And then I'm going to do the gray. Now for the gray, you will be covering up your lines. So just be careful. First do your blocks, your cinder blocks, and then we'll come in with the white. I'm just leaving a little space. It doesn't have to be exact. Just leaving a little space, it helps give me placement. Yeah, on this, I'm going over a little bit the outside of the circle. We're painting red over it, so it's okay. You're noticing as it dries, you can see the lines through it a little bit better. So no worries if you go over the lines a little bit, you'll be able to find them. I'm just going to let that dry a little bit and clean my brush off. I'm going to do some red around the outside. And for this part, we're using the bright red. Now, if you don't like the colors, you can always mix them. We did put a mixing chart in your kit so that you can um, learn how to mix your colors if you don't know already to make other colors. So you can come up with just about whatever you like. We'd rather have orange, add a little yellow to this. Kind of 
cut this right down into the E so that it looks like a complete circle. my brush. The next thing I'm going to do is put in the white lines and they can be shaky. Makes it look a little more realistic. Notice how I'm using my brush. It is um, flat. It has a bevel on the end. When I washed it I pressed it on the um, paper towel and made sure I had a little bevel going so it's nice and sharp so I can use it straight on like I'm doing. Don't want it to be the lines to be exactly perfect. They, they need to look like mortar. Don't want these to look old. Here we go. And just continue on with the last paint on for the smaller letters. There we go. Cleaning my brush and we're moving on to the V. For the V, we're going to paint black around the outside edges. I'm just following the line that we put on, the little placement line. Make sure I don't get paint on me. Just painting the edges black. If you like, you might even be able to use your marker to do this. Depends on the look you're going for. But you could take that black marker and do this part also. You can see I don't have to worry about being perfectly straight because I'm coming in with that other color I'm using silver and purple next so it's okay. You know while I'm here this E um, needs to be black so I'm in black I might as well just paint this all black. I'm going to do that for the next step we'll be ahead of the game. Everything is black first. And make sure you get off a lot of the excess paint. Nice and easy around that red. And we're going to let that dry while we put our other colors into the feet. Okay, we'll go with purple. We're going to let the paint dry and I'm going to take a little break right now. So if you have um, an issue with the paint, mine wasn't dry enough. So what we're going to do is just use a hair dryer. Take a minute, get your hair dryer out if you have one, dry it up real quick, and then we can move on. So that's what we did. And um, now the paint won't run into the area, the lighter area that I'm trying to paint now. I've mixed white with my purple color. I wanted to make it just a little lighter so that you can um, have a nice contrast between the black and the purple. Now this is something, you know, if you are um, painting and your lines are a little squiggly or you got it outside and it's mixing with the black, we're going to go back and um, 
fix all those lines. So just get your colors in. There you go. I have black outline and I have purple. We can clean it up later. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is come in with silver. And um, the silver is going to be this part of the B, just to add a little contrast there too. Just come in. So much easier when your paint is dry. We're going around the outside of that O. I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to do a second coat. Quite often the metallic colors, you need to do more than one coat. So we're going to let that dry and um, we're going to come back over to the E and this is, this is my favorite part of this whole project because we actually have stickers that are in your kit and um, you can't see white on white here, but we're going to do um, some towers and we're masking off this black now. So maybe I want a tower over here from the castle. Just leave it hanging off and um, Maybe here in the middle, I want this type of castle design. So again, just let it hang over. And maybe this one, just a partial over here. And there are four stickers all together. I'm going to put another one over here. Maybe this one's going to be up higher. Just wherever you want them. It's your design. Okay? And put those all on. You have another piece in your kit. It's just a straight um, piece of vinyl. And you're going to kind of determine where you want it to be blocked off. And then you also have a finger dauber. You stick your finger in it. It has a little sponge on the bottom. We're going to take some of the gold paint. Now I'm going to put the gold paint on, but I'm going to kind of dab some off. And then while you're going around the outside, you want to really cover in, truly cover in that area. but you have to make sure it's nice and solid around your turret, so your turret shape show. Okay, when I get up to this taller part, you'll see the lights shooting up so they're going to be a little separated. And if you don't like the way they turn out, just go back over them. And it's as simple as that. The uh, next thing we're going to do is clean this off. And find the back of a brush, any brush is going to do. Take some white and we're going to put a few stars. Just a few little stars here and there. All different sizes. Take a look at it, see what you think. If you need to add more paint somewhere, um, then we're going to just pull these off. Just pull them right up, and it leaves the outline of your castle there. This is just trash now, and throw that away. But you can see the castle background with all the lights reflecting up. Next, we're going to go back and um, just kind of fill in some design elements. So, for example, we're going to do um, the eyeglasses. Make 
sure that you even know. And eyes. Get a little thicker. Okay. You can do any outlining that you want. Maybe you want to outline the scarf. Um, we're going to come down here and fix this area if you want. You can put two coats on your silver. Remember, you can get it nice and even the way you like. Fix it up, make it look beautiful, call it your own. So the last thing is to put your little lightning bolt on the forehead. I'm using dark yellow. You can take your marker, clean up anything, use your paint, um, look it over, see what you have and make it your own. Thank you for visiting us at the Bee's Knees. And remember, you can order your kits down below. Thank you.